Understanding the Real Costs of Research A Focus on Facilities and Administrative Costs To advance our nation's economy, security, and health after World War II, the federal government decided to partner with universities to conduct research for the government. Central to this partnership is federal grant funding. This partnership has made the United States the world leader in innovation. The Internet, GPS technology, touchscreen phones, new drugs and treatments for cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and many other diseases are just a few examples of the countless innovative technologies that have resulted from federally sponsored university research. In 2023, federal government agencies, including the National Institutes of Health, NASA, the National Science Foundation, and the U.S. Department of Defense, Energy, and Agriculture invested over $59.68 billion in this research. This funding comes in two forms. The first is direct funding. Direct funding pays for research personnel salaries, supplies, project-specific equipment, and other costs specifically associated with performing and sharing research. Second, are institutional research infrastructure and support services not allowed to be paid directly to universities from a government grant. Expenses for institutional research infrastructure and support services are reimbursed to each university in the form of facilities and administrative costs. These are equally essential research operating costs, also called F and A, or indirect costs. This funding helps pay for the cost of laboratories and other research-specific facilities provided by the institution and used for federally funded research. This includes shared research instruments, maintenance and security for research facilities, utilities such as electricity, water, air conditioning, and heating for research spaces, and IT and cybersecurity to support and meet computing needs. F&A funds also help pay for the staff needed to ensure compliance with government regulations, such as the environmental health and safety requirements that protect researchers, staff, students, and patients, and research security requirements that protect the nation's investment in research. These F&A costs are essential costs of doing research. So the federal government covers all these costs, right? Wrong. Federal data shows that in fiscal year 2023, universities contributed approximately $28 billion of their own institutional funds to support research. This included over $6.8 billion for the federal government's share of F&A costs that it did not reimburse. This means that universities are subsidizing federal research. Universities are making up the difference between the full costs of conducting federal research and what the government pays. In fact, unlike other research performers that are fully reimbursed for these costs, universities are strictly limited in the amount they can recover from the federal government to pay for administrative and compliance costs associated with the government research they conduct. This is due in part to an exacting F&A cost rate negotiation process with the government that requires institutions to scrupulously identify and defend costs eligible for reimbursement. Existing government-imposed reimbursement caps on certain types of research grants and on administrative costs further erode institutions' F&A cost reimbursement rates. Although the F&A cost reimbursement process is complex and not always easy to understand, it is efficient and based on actual research costs. Moreover, it has allowed the decades-long partnership between universities and the federal government to work. That partnership has been central to the country's national security, economic growth, technological innovation, and medical advances. Despite the long-standing success of this partnership, some in Washington want to significantly reduce the federal government's role in funding F&A costs. Proposals to further reduce or cap F&A cost reimbursement would directly hurt faculty and trainees and significantly harm institutions' ability to advance important discoveries. Cuts to federal F&A funding would impact many institutions' ability to maintain large, specialized equipment that is shared among researchers, provide the compliance personnel who ensure safety for faculty, trainees, staff, and patients, purchase and maintain IT for computing needs, 
maintain existing research space in buildings, including janitorial services and security services, and build cutting-edge facilities necessary for modern research. The bottom line is that any proposal to cut F&A cost reimbursements by the federal government is a proposal to cut research. This would have a disastrous impact on research institutions' ability to foster technological innovation, improve public health and well-being, sustain a dynamic American economy, and help protect our national security. Instead of cuts, we should be talking about ways to strengthen the Government-University Research Partnership so it can thrive in the years ahead.